Hello friends, this video on Mineral Nutrition Part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now it is time for some questions. However, I think most of the questions have already been answered during the course of the lesson. But still a few of them, we will quickly look at them. Question number one. All elements that are present in a plant need not be essential to its survival. Comment. Well, this statement is absolutely true. A plant might have a lot of minerals in itself, but not all of them are required because that is why I differentiated mineral elements into two types, essential and non-essential. Essential are those which are extremely necessary. Non-essential are those which are present in small amounts. If they are present, it's fine. Even if they are not present, it's fine. But when you talk about absorbing minerals, plants absorb whatever minerals they fi find in the soil. Now, what minerals they'll find in the soil, that also depends on the location where the plant is situated. Let us suppose the plant is located somewhere near a gold mine. So there will be a lot of gold present deep inside the soil. So it might absorb some of the gold, but the element gold doesn't play any role in the life of a plant. So that means all elements which are present in a plant need not be essential to its survival. So we can say not all elements are essential. There are many elements which are needed in small amounts like zinc, molybdenum, bromelone, etc. Plants tend to absorb any nutrient it gets depending on the location or the circumstances. Let us look at the next question. If a plant shows a symptom which could develop due to deficiency of more than one nutrient, how would you find out experimentally the real deficient mineral element? Now, as I mentioned before also, that one mineral, deficiency of one mineral, for example, if a plant is deficient in nitrogen, there might be multiple symptoms for that. There might be yellowing of leaves, there might be retarded growth, there might be delayed flowering. So there can be so many symptoms for that. Similarly, if a plant has yellowing of leaves, that can be because of so many minerals. It can be because of nitrogen, it can be because of phosphorus, it can be because of sulfur, it can be because of chlorine. So how do you exactly know it is because of which mineral? So what you need to do is you need to basically study all the symptoms which are present in the plant and then you have to analyze it is because of which deficiency. So as I said, deficiency of one nutrient can cause multiple symptoms. Similar, therefore, all symptoms need to be experimentally studied and analyzed. Let me give you an example. Let us suppose there, the following symptoms are seen in a plant. So the symptoms that you observe in a plant are X, Y, Z. I'm not naming what are these symptoms. This X can be yellowing of leaves, Y can be retarded growth, Z can be delayed flowering. So these are the three symptoms which you observe in a plant. Now by our knowledge on the minerals, we know that this X symptom can be caused by one, two, and three minerals. This one can be sodium, two can be phosphorus, three can be nitrogen. So I am not writing names of elements, I am just using numbers for better understanding. Similarly, the deficiency Y can be because of 1, it can be because of 5. Z, again, it can be because of 1, it can be because of 2, it can be because of 8. Right, so these are the three things which you are actually, I mean, these are the three, uh, three different symptoms rather. Now let us suppose when you study the plant in detail. So when you study the plant in detail, you actually see that the plant is showing the symptoms 1, 2, 8 and 5. So these are the symptoms which are shown by the plant. Now if you see, now here X, Y and Z, they represent the minerals. So these represent the minerals. This X can be sulfur, Y can be sodium. So th these represent minerals and these are the symptoms. 1, 2, 3, 1, 5, 1, 2, 8. Now multiple minerals can have the same symptoms. For example, you see 1 is a symptom which is present for all the three minerals. Now when you study the plant, you see that the plant shows these symptoms. 1, 2, 8 and 5. So 1 and 2 can be because of X, it can also be because of Z, 8 is because of Z, 
5 can be because of Y. So you see most of the symptoms are because of Z. Z has 1 to 8. This also has 1 to 8. And this 5 can be because of Y. Right. So we can say that the most maybe the plant has deficiency of more than one mineral. But the, the mineral which is required the most right now is Z. Because if you provide Z mineral to this plant at least 1, 2 and 8 will get rectified. These three symptoms will get rectified. So that means you need to analyze that what first you have to analyze what all symptoms are present in the plant. Then you have to make a list of all the symptoms of a particular mineral and then you have to analyze which I mean looking at the symptoms of the plant that which should be the deficient mineral. Let us look at question number three. Why is that in certain plants deficiency symptoms appear first in younger parts of the plant while in others they do so in mature organs? Now as I told you that the minerals are not static, they are mobile. So the minerals are moving from one part of the plant to another. Now some minerals tend to move from younger parts towards the older parts. Whereas some minerals tend to move from older parts towards the younger parts. So it depends upon the mobility of the mineral. If a mineral is moving from older parts to younger parts, so the symptom will first appear in the older part because it is reaching the older part first. Similarly, if it is moving from younger part to older part, so it is reaching the younger part first, so the symptoms will first appear in the younger part. So changes which appear in a plant due to deficiency of one or more nutrients so they are known as the deficiency symptoms. Now these symptoms are for different elements are different. Now as I said some elements move from mature to younger parts whereas some others move vice versa. Therefore the symptoms vary. Let us look at the last question. Which of the following statements are true? If false, correct them. The first statement is boron deficiency leads to stout axis. This is absolutely true because boron helps in the growth of the axis. So if there is deficiency of boron, it will lead to stout axis. Every mineral element that is present in a cell is needed by the cell. This is not exactly true. This is false because as I this explained, I explained just now because if an element is present in a cell, that does not mean that the cell is using it. Cell will tend to absorb whatever it gets, but it will use whatever it needs. Nitrogen as a nutrient element is highly immobile on the plants. This is again absolutely false because nitrogen is highly mobile. It moves from older parts towards the mature parts and that is why the nitrogen deficiency symptoms are first seen in the older parts. It is very easy to establish the essentiality of micronutrients because they are required only in trace quantities. Absolutely true because micronutrients are will be needed in very small quantities. So it is very easy to understand how much essential it is. So this is again a true statement. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope this lesson would have helped you. There are a few basic things which have already been covered in the previous lessons. For example, the concept of cell division, uh, the concept of uh, the functioning of enzymes. So if you want to have a better understanding, please refer those videos. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.